because of the excesses that were the driving force behind the golden era of rock music, you can never be completely sure that the hazy memories of people who were involved are reliable. After David Bowie disclosed that he had come close to forming a supergroup with none other than John Lennon and Paul McCartney, this was probably the first thought that came to mind. After Bowie had temporarily left the chaos of Los Angeles, where he was gradually deteriorating as a result of his lifestyle that was fueled by cocaine, he was holed up in the Pierre Hotel in New York for a few months in 1974. One night, he received a knock at the door of his hotel room. Two former members of the Beatles, particularly John Lennon, whom he was a fan of since he was a young lad, were the last persons he anticipated paying him a visit. In a later interview, Bowie expressed his surprise at the presence of two prominent figures in front of him. You would understand if it turned out to be a hallucination brought on by the use of drugs. Furthermore, David received a tap at the door at the Pierre Hotel, which was the location where I had been occupying a suite for a considerable amount of time. John was there and he had Paul with him, it was around three in the morning. John was there. Over the course of the evening, the two of them had been out and about in the city. I responded by saying, wow, I thought you too ha, and John responded by saying, oh no, all of that is going to change. John then continued, you won't believe who I've got here. We have just finished spending the evening conversing. In reference to the contentious breakup that occurred between the Beatles for years previously, that must have been the first evening that they had spent together since the major disagreements. Specifically, they asked me if I would join the two of them and form a trio with them. They suggested that we alter the name of the group to something similar to David Bowie and the Beatles since they liked the concept of it being DBB. In spite of the fact that they had a number of fantastical talks at six in the morning while drinking multiple bottles of wine and enormous amounts of cocaine, their proposed artistic endeavor did not pan out. While having a conversation with Riley, Bowie let out a sigh and said, but you know, the following morning it just never came to anything. As soon as the hangovers subsided, the concept of Bowie working together with his musical heroes had been conceived, but it was quickly discarded. Despite this, he continued to collaborate with John Lennon, as evidenced by the fact that the legendary member of Imagine joined David Bowie in 1975 to co-write and perform backing vocals for the fake soul hit Fame, which was included on the album Young Americans. In a later statement, David Bowie made it very apparent that he held John Lennon in the highest regard. He stated, he was one of the major influences on my music in my opinion, he was the epitome of rock and roll and ideas in their purest form. He was the greatest of the best. He would search the avant-garde for concepts that were so far outside of, on the fringes of what was believed to be the mainstream, and then he would apply those ideas in a practical fashion to something that was considered to be popularist and make it work. This was something that I felt very similar to him. I thought it was really admirable that he would make it work for the general public-like way. This was not an example of making art for a select few, rather, it was creation for the general public. Bowie's ambition of meeting musical legends actually came true, despite the fact that the DBB did not pan out as planned. The encounter and collaboration with an artist who had such a significant impact on him was undeniably a significant event for him.